Hello, everybody, and welcome back to A Swift Look. I'm Zoe, and today we have a lot to go over. Taylor Swift breaking records left and right, a little update on Taylor potentially going to the Met Gala and that whole saga, a lot to discuss. But before we get into all the news, please, if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel. If you love Taylor Swift, if you love hearing about the news regarding Taylor Swift, rankings, hot takes, all that good stuff. We would so appreciate you subscribing to our channel. It'll take you less than five seconds and it will really help us. So thank you for that in advance. Okay, let's get into today's show. The first story being that Taylor Swift is breaking records, breaking the Billboard Top 100 or Hot 100 record for the most songs on the Hot 100 in the top songs of all time. I didn't really articulate that properly, but I will explain when we when we dive in. So 14 of Taylor Swift's songs off of her new album, The Torture Poets Department, took the top 14 spots on Billboard's Hot 100 chart, which, was be- which has beaten her previous record that she held, I believe with Midnight, of her holding the top 10 spots on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. So that's right, 14 of Taylor's songs are the top 14 songs last week, which is pretty incredible considering the fact that, I mean, it's one thing to have your single be on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. It's another thing to have maybe a couple of songs that you've put out, but to have almost the entirety of the, I guess, first album of a Torture Poets Department in the top 14 slots is kind of mind-blowing because a lot of those songs are not meant to be, they're not singles, they're not songs that are crowd pleasers that everyone's going to love. They are emotional, they're vulnerable, they're ballads, etc, etc. And so for them to basically dominate the charts is incredible. I'm going to go through and read to you the number one to number 14 song because I do think it's interesting what songs have kind of broken through and what songs maybe aren't quite as popular. I mean, they're still popular because they're in the top 14 (laughs) of the Hot 100 chart. But because Taylor put out her single when she did, which was when the album came out, um, obviously that song is getting a lot of focus and attention because it's the single. But then I think there's a real kind of grassroots campaign around other songs to build momentum around it, or just people tend to like certain songs more. Certain songs go viral on TikTok, which I think also just kind of boosts the song and people start to listen to it more and more and more. So anyway, let's go over the top 14 songs. Starting off with number one, no surprise, Fortnite featuring Post Malone. It's the single, it would have been weird if it wasn't the top song. Number two is Down Bad, which is kind of interesting. I love that song so much. I think it's great, but it's not, I don't know if if you would have asked me to rank them. I don't think I would have predicted Down Bad being the second most played song off the album, but I'm not mad about it. Number three, and this one doesn't surprise me, I Can Do It With A Broken Heart. This is the song I feel like that's kind of like popped off from the rest of the album. It's again, gone very viral on TikTok. People love it. It's very buzzy. It's very fun. So doesn't shock me that that's at three. Number four, the Torture Poets Department. Again, makes sense. It's the title track of the song. So I think a lot of people who are probably checking out the album were like, oh, I want to hear the title track because that's what the album is named after. So that, that makes sense. Number five is So Long London. Again, and it's interesting it's in the fifth spot because it's the fifth song on the album. Um, And again, I think because of the lore surrounding Taylor Swift's track five songs, it makes sense that people were interested in hearing it. Number six, My Boy Only Breaks His Favorite Toys. Another great one. Number seven, But Daddy, I Love Him. That song also, I feel like, has kind of taken on a new life and people really, really love that song. Number eight, Florida, featuring um, Florence and the Machine. Again, makes sense. Number nine, Who's Afraid of Little Old Me. Number 10, Guilty as Sin. Number 11, Fresh Out the Slammer. Number 12, LOML. Number 13, The Alchemy. And number 14, The Smallest Man Who Ever Lived. Again, not surprising that like LOML, or I I guess starting with Fresh Out the Slammer down to The Smallest Man Who Ever Lived. Those are like this more kind of slow, emotional, uh, again, like not your typical 
Billboard Hot 100 song. So that makes sense that those are towards the bottom. It is interesting to me that the songs that made the top 14 spots are all songs off of, again, the number, or the first album. None of the anthology songs made it onto in, into that top 14 list, which shouldn't be so surprising because, again, the, I guess, first album came out at midnight and people like focused on that and initially, and then you had all the extra songs that came out. But I do feel like, especially with So High School and with Thank You, Amy, those two songs, I feel like people have really latched onto from the anthology songs. They have the lore regarding Travis and Kim. Um, they're also, especially So so uh, High School has really gone viral on TikTok, or at least on my side of TikTok. So I'm kind of surprised those didn't crack the, the top 14. But Every single song from the album is on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. Every single one, every, all 31 songs. So Taylor is just crushing records left and right. And despite the fact that maybe this album is a bit more divisive than past albums, maybe this is an album that people didn't love in, like right away as maybe other albums, there's no denying that when Taylor Swift puts out an album, everybody pays attention, everybody listens, everybody tunes in, like you're... Nobody is immune to the powers of Taylor Swift. I think that is very, very clear. And I also think, and I'd be curious what you guys think too, I feel like this album is really one you have to listen to a lot. You have to listen to a lot to really get it, to feel it, to like find those songs that really connect with you. I know for myself, there are songs that I love right now that when I first listened to the album, I liked fine, but I didn't really love. And now because I've heard them over and over again, I love them. So I do think it's an album that kind of has to sit with people for a, a bit. You kind of have to give it some time to wash over you. Um, and so I think ultimately when we look back on this album, I think people will think of it more positively than maybe they initially thought we would. So anyway, congrats to Taylor an incredible achievement. And uh, I'll be curious to see which songs stick around on the Hot 100 chart, what's gonna be her next single. I wouldn't be surprised if I Can Do It With A Broken Heart becomes her next single because it's a banger, it's a banger. Okay, moving on to some Met Gala news. So we talked about this, I think a few weeks ago now at this point, or maybe at least a couple weeks ago, that it was reported, I think by TMZ and some other sources that Taylor was not going to be attending the 2024 Met Gala. We know her Eras tour comes back very, very soon. She's gotta get ready for that, get to Paris, all, all that. And so it wasn't a huge shock when we heard that initially. Well, then yesterday, page six came out and said, actually, Taylor is going to be attending the Met Gala. And everyone was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Is she going? Is Travis going? I think people thought maybe this is actually happening. Well, people, and we know people tends to be pretty accurate when it comes to Taylor Swift. People has now reported that Taylor is officially not going to the Met Gala. So we can stop the speculating. We can stop pretending like, they're saying she's not going, but actually she is going. I think that this is officially confirmed. Taylor Swift is not going to be going to the Met Gala. Again, the Met Gala is on Monday, May 6th, and her tour kicks back off again on May 9th, which is a Thursday in Paris. So it doesn't seem likely that she would, she she kind of needs some time to like rest, recuperate. I also wouldn't be surprised if she's, if she heads to Paris like on that Monday, again, just to like, Get, do some sound check, maybe do some rehearsal. It's been a couple months since she's been on tour, so she might need to kind of get back into practice. Also, potentially maybe adding a new era to the era's tour that she needs to work through. So, um, doesn't surprise me that she's not going. Um, again, we don't know. I think Travis is also not attending, but we might have to wait until Monday night to, for that to be officially confirmed. It has been a long time since Taylor last went to the Met Gala. It's been since 2016, which is kind of crazy. Was also kind of a major night and evening in the Taylor Swift lore. I've used that word twice this episode, but it's true because that was the night where she reportedly met Tom Hiddleston and also the night that she reportedly met Joe Alwyn, who she ended, she ended up dating both of those guys. So that Met Gala was a very pivotal moment for Taylor uh, over the course of her, of her life. It's been a while, but hopefully there's always next year. 
maybe when she's taken some time off and she can like rest and relax and not be on tour, she'll go to the Met Gala. There's also been some reports that they will be attending the Formula One race in Miami this weekend. Um, we know that Travis Kelsey is a uh, partial investor in one of the Formula One teams. And so I think there's a, probably a good chance that Travis will be in Miami this weekend. Will Taylor Swift attend? I guess who's, we'll find out. Patrick Mahomes is also an investor in the same team. And so if Patrick and Brittany are there, I could see Taylor wanting to go down and enjoy the festivities with everybody. So we'll have to wait and see if that's a possibility. But obviously, if that's true and it happens, we will make sure to cover it next week because... We cover everything regarding Taylor Swift on this show. All right, guys, that is it for today's episode. As always, please make sure to subscribe to our channel, follow us on all social media platforms, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.